As meditators, we have three weapons to protect ourselves. Of course, the major protection is against our own defilements. But it's also good protection against crazy ideas we, can, we could pick up from other people. The weapons the Buddha lists are learning, seclusion, and discernment. Learning here, of course, means learning the Dharma. And it's good to have a fund of Dharma knowledge that you can draw on. When something comes up in the meditation, you can stop and think, what would the Buddha say about this? And the more you know what about he actually said, then the more likely you are to come up with something that's appropriate. As for seclusion, there are two kinds. There's physical seclusion, when you get away from other people. You're by yourself. And that's a temporary weapon to use. So at the very least, you're not being incited by other people's defilements. You don't pick up their germs, so to speak. And then there's mental seclusion. We just get the mind really quiet. You're secluded from unskillful qualities, secluded from sensuality. Your fascination with thinking about what kind of food you like to eat, what kind of things you'd like to see, what kind of sounds you'd like to hear. You can seclude your mind from those things by giving it a better pleasure. Because the reason we go for sensory pleasures, as the Buddha said, is we don't see any other escape from pain. We may know the drawbacks of sensual pleasures and the drawbacks of sensual thinking, but without an alternative, where are we going to go? We practice concentration that gives us that alternative. Instead of directing your thoughts to sensuality and evaluating different sensual plans, you direct the thoughts to your breath. You evaluate the breath. And you take an interest in what's going on inside here. The more you can take an interest here, as I said this morning, the more you see. It's like physicists, they look at light, and they can study light for their whole lives, and still not come to the end of it. You can study the breath and the mind's relationship to the breath. Fortunately, you can come to an end of the problems this way. But there's a lot to see here, in terms of all the fabrication that goes on in the present moment. And learning how to get fascinated here is your protection, and it's your weapon against the defilements that would like to go out and have a little more sensual thinking and say, it's not just a little bit, it's not too much. After all, you've been meditating all day. Give yourself a little reward, as if sensuality were a reward. And then the final weapon is discernment, where you understand more and more about what's going on through what you've learned through concentration, getting the mind to settle down. You can see more clearly where the mind creates its problems. problems that it doesn't have to create at all, and learn how to undo them, untangle them, get past them. So those are your weapons, learning, seclusion, discernment. And as with any weapons, they can be very helpful, but if you misuse them, you can harm yourself. How about learning? People spend a lot of time arguing over their learning. As the Buddha said, a lot of those arguments have as their purpose nothing more than just winning out. Remember, the, the Dharma is medicine. That's shown by the way the Buddha would teach it. As he said, he would say things that were true, beneficial, and timely. Those are the qualities you look for in medicine. You want genuine medicine. You want medicine that's good for what it ails you. 
And if there's a course of treatment, you want to make sure you take things in the right order. And when the Buddha is talking about timely, in terms of his words, sometimes they would be pleasing, sometimes they'd be displeasing. Sometimes you have to take medicine that you like, and other times you have to take medicine that you don't like. But that's the nature of the Dharma. It's medicine. And you don't use medicine to throw at other people or to exalt yourself. Use it to cure your own illnesses. So always keep that in mind. As for seclusion, physical seclusion, people can drive themselves crazy if they don't know how to handle physical seclusion. A lot of people have complained to me that with a pandemic they find themselves spending a lot more time by themselves. The future looks bleak, and so what happens when the future looks bleak? You start ruminating about the past. You can think of all the stupid things you did and all the harsh things that other people did to you and get yourself really worked up. I know when I first went to Thailand and stayed with a John Fuang up on the hillside there, I had hours and hours of time by myself. And for the first couple of months, a lot of issues from my days in grade school, high school, issues in college, issues in the family came up. And I'd find myself getting worked up over things that hadn't, hadn't happened for 10, 15 years. Unfortunately, John Fung steered me around. He said, look, the fact that you made mistakes back then or that people did horrible things to you, the mistakes you made came from your own lack of skill. And if you don't work on those skills right now, you're going to keep on making those same mistakes. So the solution to dealing with issues in the past is to focus on your lack of skill in the present moment. The way the mind talks to itself, the way the mind treats itself. Look here for the solution to the problems back then. Of course, you can't go back and solve those problems back then. You can't do anything about them. But you can change your attitude, and you can reflect on the fact that this is what happens when you don't have skill. These are the mistakes you make. As for the things that other people did to you, well, that's an issue of karma. So it comes back again to mistakes you make. So the proper use of seclusion is to be right here, unpeeling all the levels of fabrication that go on right here. And when you uncover the problem here, then you can face the future with a lot more confidence that you won't make the same mistake again. As for discernment, when you come up with insights, you have to remember, the Buddha's search was for what is skillful. That was the question he always asked. So anything happened in his meditation, well, what's the skillful use of this? So many people get an insight and they get really proud about it. They really attach to it. The really serious cases think they've gained awakening one way or another, or at least not full awakening, but they say, okay, well, maybe stream entry, maybe once returning. I knew this group of students that John Fuang had. They came to see him as a group, and then when, they, when he wasn't in Bangkok, they'd go off and meditate as a group, and they began to assume themselves. One guy was a stream enterer, one guy was a non-returner, this woman was a stream enterer. That woman was a non-returner. And it was total fabrication based on some pretty meager insights. Of course, what happens, the problem there is the pride that steps in. Say, I saw something I didn't see before and that most other people haven't seen. Abhasika Gi has a good way of dealing with that. She says, when an insight arises, ask yourself what happens next. Or think of the Buddhist question, what's the proper use of this? What's the skillful use of having had that insight? Now, 
them, and it's not the kind of insight that you can use to apply to a problem you have in your mind right now, then it's, then it's a distraction. No matter how profound it may seem. If it's not useful, it's not what we want, because the Buddha's insights, or the insights that the Buddha recommends, are all things that you can use. Because we don't just arrive at an insight. We use the insight to gain release. So remember your weapons. The NRA would have us use other things as weapons. But we're taking the Buddha's advice, the weapons that really give us protection. Learning, seclusion, discernment. Keep them in good shape and learn how to use them well. Make sure you don't abuse them. Make sure that you don't basically leave them lying around where the defilements can pick them up. Because then they'll use them, the weapons to shoot you, to stab you. Keep them at hand at all times so that when the defilements show up, you're the one with a weapon in your hand. And instead of stabbing yourself or shooting yourself, you can shoot the defilements down. <laughs>